Okay, so I'm very, very briefly going to talk about LU factorization. Um, so the idea here is to get a, a square matrix A and we reduce it to an upper triangular matrix called U, in other words, zero below the main diagonal. And the interesting thing about that, of course, we know how to do it by row operations, but um, it's possible to accumulate those row operations together to get a lower triangular matrix L. So you can always write um, a non-singular matrix in this way as a LU factorization of two non-singular matrices, but one's upper triangular, one's lower triangular. It's not actually unique. I mean, so you can actually make a choice um, of uh, scaling the diagonals here or, the, or in U or the diagonals in L. And in particular, we mentioned that we could, when we do the um, Gaussian elimination, we can, we can have ones here if we want. And if, uh, if um, it has ones in the diagonal, then um, it's called a Doolittle factorization by some people at least. Um, seems a bit strange, sounds like you don't do very much, but it's just named after a guy called Doolittle. Um, you can also choose to have the ones in the lower triangular factor, and, and that's called a Kraut factorization. I guess they came up with the idea separately. Um, there's a special case where we can make um, u equal to L transpose. So in, in particular, uh, that's handy for symmetric matrices with, with a, another property as well. Um, that's quite useful um, in some cases, and uh, in that case called Cholesky factorization. Um, you kind of have to share the diagonal numbers between the two to make it right, rather than trying to make it one. Okay, so how does LU help us? Well, just imagine that um, we've done an LU factorization, so LUX equals B, because A is L times U. Um, one of the advantages of this sort of method is that it's almost as good as having an inverse of A, in that we can um, use this to solve the system for lots of different right-hand sides B. So, you, you know, if you, you're going to keep the system, the, the matrix the same, but change the, the right-hand side numbers, um, then uh, this is a, a, a way that uses a lot less arithmetic than working out A inverse, um, especially if you're going to work out the inverse using the, um, uh, the cofactor method, which is very laborious for big matrices. So how, how does this help us to have the LU factorization? Well, um, think of it this way, uh, as, a, as a kind of intermediate step, let's give a name for u times x. Then we're trying to solve L y equals b. But L is lower triangular, so we can, we can um, substitute uh, in to find the numbers, just as we did back substitution at the end of Gaussian elimination. In other words, the first number, um, L11 times y1, just gives you b1, so you immediately know y1, and then of course you know y1, you can find y2, and so on. And we call that forward substitution, just, just the, um, it's just going the other way to back substitution. But the point is we can just work out the solutions y in order. And then we've got y, um, then we look at u x equals y, and, and u is upper triangular, so, so in effect um, y is the um, the right hand side or the last column of the augmented matrix in Gaussian elimination, and then to solve for x we just back substitute. So once you've got an LU factorization, you can very easily solve for x for, for different values of b um, by doing a forward then a backward substitution, which is not really that much more work than a, applying um, a, a, an inverse of the matrix you've already worked out. It's just a, a, a little bit more work than that. So we can reuse the L and U to solve it with any B. And um, now you need to compute and store L and U. Um, and and, if, and typically we, 
we're thinking of problems where A is absolutely enormous. For, so, for example, a big finite element system for solving a three-dimensional electromagnetic system or something like that uh, that involves a very huge matrix, then um, uh, we can store the L and U, I mean, more or less in the same memory that we use for A. In other words, we can overwrite it, except that uh, the LU factorization just has one extra diagonal to store. So, um, uh, yeah, some computer codes to solve this will attempt to, to reuse the memory for A. Okay, so let's do it the do little way. <laughs> so, um, uh, so there is kind of slightly more systematic treatment, but we'll just do it for three by threes because you can just see it all by hand. So, um, so uh, we we want ones on the uh, lower uh, on the lower triangular matrix. So an easy way to see this is if, if you just multiply this out and see what you get, then um, it's kind of clear that we can actually solve it. Look, look at the first row. The U's are the same as the first row of A. Um, so that, that's just familiar from Gaussian elimination of not changing the first rows. And then what have happened? what's happened to the second row? Well, the thing is we're trying to find the L's and the U's. Um, we already know the first row of the u's, so the one one, um, the one two, and the one three, we already know. Um, so uh, we have to solve. Um, we have to solve for the uh, bits we don't know. So, for example, look at this one, l two one, u one one. We we already know u one one. It's a one one, and we know a one two. So we know l two one. So we've got this number and so on. So I'm uh, just writing this out. Um, here we've got that the first row is just the A's, you know, the, the same as the A's. And then to get L21, we um, get A21 over the U11 we found, and the L31 is A31 over the U11 we've already found. Um, and now we have to go along getting the other U's and u22 is a22 minus l21 u12. Um, so we, we see that um, we've got this a22 and we've subtracted something from it and in this case uh, we get the a23 and we subtract something from it. Um, so uh, we already know uh, u13 and we know u12. So we can just say that um, and well and we already know that L21. So we've got the u22 and u23. So L32 is A32 minus L31 U12 over U22 and uh, finally we get U33. So um, it, it seems a little bit kind of arbitrary, but all we've done is multiply the, the two matrices together. We get a unique solution really because we've chosen these to be ones. If we hadn't, we'd have to make a choice as to kind of how to split the, the, the coefficients between the L and the U. So you don't have to remember these formulas. All you have to do is remember what the factorization looks like, multiply it out, and then find the numbers in order. Of course, just like Gaussian elimination, we can use pivoting and um, you see that we'll be dividing by some numbers and we'd like those to be as big as possible. OK, so let's do an example. So here's our matrix. Hopefully it's not singular. And here we've got two different right hand sides we want to solve for. So because we've got two right-hand sides. Well, actually, you know, you, you could just do Gaussian elimination. I mean, it, um, you know, we could um, just put the two right-hand sides as separate uh, columns in the augmented matrix and just go ahead. You can, you can actually do as many as you like. Um, 
But there comes a point where if you've got lots of right hand sides, you may as well do LU factorization. OK, so looking at the uh, Doolittle version, we've got ones on the diagonal here. Uh, we multiply it out, but the only difference is we've got particular numbers for A's. So let's just go through it in order. First of all, um, the, the first row of the U's are just the same as the first row of the A's. U, U11 is minus 1, U12 is 1, U13 is minus 1, and we've got them. Okay, so we've got those U's. And then look at the next row. Uh, can we find L21? Um, well, uh, L21, U11 is minus 2. And u11 is minus 1, so l12, l21, sorry, is 2. Uh, let's look at the l, you see a pattern here, look, I'm going down this column. You see. So now let's look at this one. <laughs> so l31 um, times u11 is 1. And u11 is minus 1, so l31 is minus 1. So we're doing something quite similar to Gaussian elimination. And now we go to this one. Same order, you know, that we're looking at this one. Look, let's find the um, U22. Um, so uh, L21, we already know. U12, we already know. And uh, U22 is the what we want. And we know that should come to 4. So if we just subtract that, we get U22 is 2. And now going along the same row, u21, u13 are both known. Uh, minus 2 has got to be that plus u23. And l21 times u13 is already minus 2. So u23 has to be 0. OK, we kind of done the second row. Um, we're doing it about a about time now. So. And then uh, we do something very similar for the last row. Uh, you notice we, we've got U31 already. We, we, we already did that, actually. Um, so we're, we're doing it in the order that we do Gaussian elimination. Um, and then L23, uh, we find that's 1. We already know everything else. And U33 has to be 3. OK, so now we found all the L's and U's, and we write them in the matrix. Uh, remember, we've got 1's on the L's because we chose the, the Doolittle. And then we just slot those numbers in there, and we've got L and U. And it would be a good idea to check that it works. So 1 times minus 1 is minus 1. Uh, it's that 1 times that 1. This is 1. This 1 times that 1 gives us minus 1. It's easy because you've got zeros here, you see. It's, it's kind of... Um, you don't actually have to multiply it by the zeros. And then 2 times minus 1, the rest is 0, it's minus 2, and so on. So it's, it's quite e easy and quick to check it. So that's the LU. And now we want to solve for a particular right-hand side. There's B1, minus 2, minus 6, 9. Um, and then uh, the intermediate variable that we just kind of invent Y is U times X. Um, so L, Y equals B1. And of course, we do that by forward substitution. So let's see how that works. Um, so 1 times Y1 equals minus 2. So Y2 is minus 2. We've already got uh, Y1. Uh, 2 times Y1. Uh, so that's, that's uh, minus 4. Uh, plus Y2 is minus 6. So... Uh, y2 has to be minus 2. And then finally, we've got minus 2 times 1. Minus 2 times minus 1, so that's 2. And then we've got minus 2. Uh, so the, the responsibility for, y, for, for, for fixing this to be 9 is all on y3, and y3 has to be 9. And so we've got the y solution. We haven't, we haven't finished yet. We've got a little bit more work to do, um, because... Um, we've now got to do the backwards substitution. So the backwards substitution, the right-hand side is now uh, the y we've just found. And then we see x3 has to be 3. 
going back here it's a nice zero here so 2x1 is minus 2 uh, so x2 is minus 1 and then um, putting those those in for um, x2 and x3 uh, we find that x3 has to be 3 so that was the same back substitution that we do in Gaussian elimination and we can do the same story for, for another vector b2 and uh, it's not as much work as working out an inverse at least. So first you find y um, and then use back substitution to find x. And here we've written it as decimals. <coughs>